Thanks for making it out today. There's a lot of people here. Uh, hope you guys are ready to, to, to learn some very interesting things uh, based on our research of search engine hacking. Uh, my name is Rob Reagan. This is Fran Brown. We work at Stack and Lou uh, doing security assessments. And we are the lords of the Bing. <laughs> 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 so basically, we set out to whoa, we set out to uh, improve upon search engine hacking, and we realized that most tools that exist were getting blocked. Uh, most tools, uh, <laughs> most slides don't work when you need them to. Uh, but we actually we realized that uh, we we thought it was a shame, really a crying shame that Google hacking seemed to be a dying technique. I, I had a bit of a weep. Uh, you guys, though, if you also weep with me, then you can stop now. There's no need to cry anymore because we are bringing it back. We sought out to make tools that don't get blocked. We sought out to actually make practical techniques that you maybe you don't actually have to go out and scan actively. You can just have something that's you know, running all the time and, and letting you know what happens. And uh, we also just wanted people to really think differently about the way uh, you approach Google hacking and also to blow your minds, as you can see by the icon. The nice blow your mind icon there. <laughs> so we uh, basically decided that Google and Bing were our favorite search engines. Uh, Yahoo is good and that's something we're going to explore more as well, but uh, what we focused on now was uh, these indexes, because they're the biggest treasure troves on the internet to find, uh, openly find free information on error messages that are occurring in websites, vulnerable software that's being used in websites, and really, like, like, like I said before, we just really thought it was a shame that uh, not many people you, you actively are using Google hacking to find this information, and uh, we're, we're, we basically decided that these crawlers are the best to gather uh, this information and they, they had cache it so that it's forever available to you. And uh, How many people here uh, have done Google hacking before, are familiar with Google hacking? Yeah, I assumed everyone is. I assumed everybody, right? How many people have uh, Google hacked your company that you work for? Cool. How many people here have Google hacked a person? You can't Google hack a person, that's just stalking. <laughs> Um, you guys seem to be familiar with Google hacking for the most part. Um, the types of things we're looking for here is uh, just looking at the old Google hack database is uh, advisories, error messages, files containing passwords, things like that. Um, just as an example, looking for some uh, SQL errors being dumped to, dumped at the screen or some uh, uh, password lists in the URL. These are our new tools. These are the ones that uh, you're, you're going to use from now on. Basically, uh, we're, use, we're leveraging the Google Ajax API now that doesn't get you blocked. It doesn't violate terms of service if that's something you could, no one at DEF CON cares about that. You guys want to violate the hell out of some services. So uh, w these are the tools you're going to use because we have, we're utilizing the Google custom search engine. How many of you have heard, have heard of that? What it lets you do is create uh, customized search results. Let's say you only care about star, dot, uh, FedEx.com or something like that. Uh, that that's maybe you only want to see results that come out of that. You can set a Google custom search interface that will only give you the wild cards that you specify, and you can utilize that in our tools. And for the first time ever, we also re released a Bing hacking tool that actually will get vulnerability information. It's not just giving you kind of like passive uh, footprinting information. Uh, it's actually, we made a Bing hacking database that we converted uh, the traditional Johnny Long's Google hacking database from 2003-2004 to uh, you work with Bing and uh, enumerate uh, things such as URLs uh, from sites and also um, Bing has a feature that, that a lot of people I think don't know about that wanted to make you aware of that you can search by IP address. And this is really uh, interesting because you can see things like virtual host to IP address. You can see uh, like server farms that like rack, something like Rackspace that has a lot of domains all on the same IP address. 
Uh, I actually was talking to some people yesterday at Black Hat that they have done pen tests where they saw a site administrator actually hosting his personal site or porn site on cor corporate infrastructure. And no one knew about that because they kind of had that as a closely guarded secret, but Bing knew about it. So you could put in things like just the IP address of your, of your server and then see all the domains that are hosted on it that are publicly available. And we also, for those people that are, I, I know, I know all of you do, want to violate the hell out of some terms of service, uh, are releasing a script that everyone kind of knew was theoretically possible, I just didn't know of anything that was out there and available for you to use that would uh, utilize a list of open proxies that are known to work to just pull results from Google. And this will indefinitely dump millions of URLs uh, for whatever type of information you're trying to scrape. So either have an army of people ready to analyze it or be ready to write your own tools to analyze it because uh, it's something that's, that's just going to give you massive amounts of information. And it also uh, uses, utilizes some things that we found uh, deep in the Google documentation such as uh, the user IP query string parameter. That lets you, basically it's designed for the, the AJAX API and it's designed for people that are embedding widgets in their site that, that kind of makes them the middleman proxy between their client users and then uh, that people that want to search that site using Google. And we just can specify a random value for that to reduce getting blocked by Google. Also it scrapes the mobile interface, which is what, you get, what you, comes up automatically based on your user <coughs> agent when you hit Google from your iPhone or your Android phone. And that we're, we're utilizing because it seems to have less re restrictions on getting you blocked. It also is very lightweight. It has nothing, nothing like advertisements or other superfluous links that you uh, would be a m more overhead in, in scraping this type of information. Um, so just a little background on this. Um, uh, I don't know how many of you know, but uh, the Google SOAP API, uh, they stopped issuing keys back in like 2006. And, most of the existing Google hacking tools that kind of uh, hobbled along until then uh, finally just all stopped working last September when Google finally closed that down all together. Um, we, our uh, primary tool uses the Google Ajax API as we mentioned, uh, which is the approved way of doing it, but it does have several limitations, um, notably of which is um, that it limits you to 64 results per query, which is fine if you're just trying to Google hack a small company or something along those lines. It does make footprinting uh, using uh, Google pretty much impossible. If you want to enumerate uh, URLs of an application you're trying to footprint or domains for your company, uh, 64 results is going to limit you. While, whereas Google Scrape Diggity, while violating terms of service probably, um, is, uh, yeah, will give you a thousand results just like the web interface. So it's a primary reason for doing that. Um, as we see on that, that right there, um, how many of you guys are familiar with Scroogle? Anyone use Scroogle? few people, but uh, that kind of inspired us for this and they, uh, they found other interfaces that were stripped down, didn't have advertisements that are easy to scrape. Um, this is just one here. They, they shut down the, the old interface, but this is uh, just using Windows, uh, or actually scraping Windows Mobile, or Windows Mobile, Google Mobile, uh, which is a nice stripped down interface, easier for us to scrape. And like we said, for the first time ever, we've created a Bing hacking database uh, that would actually give you good vulnerability disclosures from Bing. Uh, a lot of the disparate features between Google and Bing made it so that the known, known Google hacking queries didn't work. It's things such as in URL uh, you can't use in Bing. So, but there are substitute features if you read into the documentation, things like in anchor instead of in URL. And uh, uh, things like the file type are very limited in title. And, uh, but, the, but basically this is just something we made for you to utilize and we're, and we're giving away uh, for free uh, via our website. Yeah, so we have close to a, a thousand uh, queries in the Bing hacking database now and to my knowledge I, I haven't seen any. The limited amount of Bing tools we've seen in the past have just been strictly footprinting type tools and not actually finding vulnerabilities. And we're also giving away the Stack and Lude database, uh, which is just a, uh, a list of queries we compiled from forums and, and kind of underground uh, lists so that, that uh, were beyond the Johnny Long Google hacking database and the Foundstone database. And it's also stuff that we actually have an intern actively adding to. Chain to a desk. Yeah, just right banging now, out queries. stuff, interesting searches from Google all day. And uh, he's also working on, on some other stuff uh, from Google Code Search, which I'll tell you about a little bit later. So we're not happy just giving you the old stuff converted. We're uh, going to be continuing to develop new regexes and adding them to this. Yeah, like this first one here, this first example, actually I found uh, sites that 
they were giving away, or they had exposed to the internet their salary information. Basically, their, their pay band of what employees make what amount. Like, that's definitely a sensitive information leak that you don't want on your website, and you could use this search to find it in Google's index. So now we're, we're going to demonstrate some of our tools to you. Uh, we, we, took all, we, we basically decided that all the old tools that we didn't want to use anymore needed improved upon for several reasons. Uh, and we came up with this user interface to utilize uh, our, our new techniques on Google and Bing. They pre-ship with the Foundstone database, the Google Hacking database, and the SLDB, and uh, allow you to do things like multiple domains. Uh, that was one thing that, that, all, that all the previous tools didn't do. You had to do one domain at a time, which is completely unrealistic if, if you're actually uh, trying to monitor a company of any sort of size. Uh, most of our clients are uh, Fortune 100 companies, and, and uh, one, of, one of them has 700 domains. It's just completely unrealistic to say, I want, I want to do one at a time. And uh, you can also plug in the Google Custom Search key that's provided, as I mentioned before. That, that allows you to filter your, filter your results just down to things you care about. Yeah. And uh, so basically for that client, we created a Google custom search engine that just filtered on those 700 domains. Then they could just check every box and just run it against that and, you know, make it a lot easier for them to Google hack themselves. But um, on a uh, unrelated note, how many people are tired of looking at socks that are just normal and you want to get to socks that have pictures of wolves on them or clothes that have pictures yeah. of wolves on them in general? You, got, you have some wolf wardrobe? Yeah, and, I know uh, you do. Yeah, wolf sweaters. <laughs> just as a good... <laughs> Yeah, that was one of the funnest things about doing, doing uh, s s looking, is just looking at these results. Uh, one of the searches looks for uh, OpenX uh, shopping cart, open source so shopping cart software that's uh, known to have several vulnerabilities in it. And we uh, found a website that actually specializes in selling clothing with wolves on it uh, that's using that shopping cart. So if you want some free wolf clothes, go to wolfpeople.com <laughs> and uh, you'll be stocked with all the wolf socks you can possibly have. <laughs> Look at that. Even for the children you use socks. They get them early. But yeah, so basically the, the fact that the powered by Xcart uh, shopping cart software that's going to have vulnerabilities in the page was what Google finds and uh, as, it's, as it's indexing the, the content of the page and then allows us to generate queries to find vulnerable software in use. Yeah. So we got Bing. And the Bing interface, actually, you have to have a, a SOAP key. You can just, and we actually provided a link for you to go to the site and associate your Hotmail or Live account, or whatever Microsoft Passport account you have, just make one up, and uh, you'll, they'll issue a key for free. And you just need to plug that in. And as I said before, uh, Bing has a really nice feature that allows you to search by IP address. And as someone that does network risk assessments, uh, a lot of times we don't even get domain names. We get uh, you know, an IP address range. So you can plug in IP addresses there up in the, in the top right uh, via, you can either specify one at a time, a, a, a start IP, dash end IP, or a class. And it'll enumerate uh, all of those four sites and then dump the results from whatever Google queries you're specifying. We also allowed you to specify any queries appended to the end of all of the things loaded in via the flat files, which you can go to the file menu and also load in your own flat file if you have some awesome Google hacking queries that you want to keep secret or if they're just something that, you want, that maybe no one else cares about you, that you just want to use to ha uh, monitor your sites or whatever you're interested in. And uh, also on the simple tab, there's just an interface to plug in uh, any query you want that would be akin to uh, just hitting the web interface, which I think most people do now. Yeah, so again, uh, this is just the, the Bing interface and to show that uh, Bing does have tons of information about uh, vulnerabilities. Um, just doing a, a simple search on entitled Snap Server will give us, you know, some Snap Servers online. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, you're hitting someone's web storage just by finding this and able to look through their information. Cool. Oh, and uh, last but not least, uh, this is still in prototype phase, but the Google Scrape Diggity. Uh, just to kind of illustrate, uh, we could take in uh, either a query or a query file full of uh, regexes from the Google Hack database, uh, a list of uh, Google servers, proxy lists, max results, and just to show you to enumerate them for footprinting purposes. Um, oops. It's uh, a quote at the end of the Perl file extension. Yeah, this, the, I mean, obviously we're not going to demo downloading th millions in, of URLs right now, but this is something that can go beyond the uh, AJAX API 64 result limit 
Uh, yeah. So we see 73 results here, clearly above 64, and you, utilizing it in a, uh, in a way that's, that's practical. If I was trying to do an assessment of stackgrew.com, I might want a list of every URL that they have in Google for this. This makes it possible. One thing we, uh, we, we realized is that uh, we're, you know, the traditional defenses against this uh, finding these sensitive information leaks or vulnerable software was to just Google hack yourself. Uh, how many people that are responsible for guarding the security of a domain actually do this on a regular basis? Like a, a few hands? And, and yeah, and that's most, most of the people we talk to just don't do this. And most of the people, if they do, maybe once a quarter, which just isn't good enough. There could be something that happens, uh, you know, between quarters that you can entirely miss because it was added to the index and maybe and maybe removed after another uh, after the Google bot crawls that site again. Uh, you know, other, th other things that people do to, to guard, protect against this are update robots.txt or put meta tags into their pages to uh, prevent it from being indexed by Google. We also kind of realized that's not really, uh, you know, that's something you should be doing, but it's not something that always happens when new features or new, new applications are launched on the website. Uh, another thing that people do is they use data loss prevention tools that uh, take a hash of your intellectual property and then monitor uh, anything that's going out via email or anything that's going across the network to uh, see if employees are leaking things, and, and which is something you, you can do, but also we, we realize not, not really good enough to prevent this type of thing. Also, uh, you should be using policies and legal restrictions, but again, it's only, only so much protection. So to, to really take it to the next level, to really to, to do uh, prevention in depth, we, we realized that, that all these failed and we needed something better. See all the stuff, forget it, it's dead, this is done, <laughs> th th this way of doing things is over. It's not effective, as we saw one or two guys raise their hand and say they Google hack themselves on a regular basis. I think they were probably lying. Nobody does <laughs> it. Probably lying to you. you know, and because of this, the Wolfsock companies of the world are left insecure and just a scary place. So now we're going to tell you about uh, some, some more advanced techniques that, that we came up with. Protect your neck, fool. Protect your neck. <laughs> As we said, the tools exist, but they're not convenient, we realize. We, we realize that, that you don't get real-time updates, you don't get multi-engine results, you don't have any way to monitor the data and keep a, a historical log of, of everything that's found, and you don't have multi-domain searching. Uh, but that's until now. Uh, we're going to tell you a little bit about Google hacking alerts and Bing alerts, which is something we came up with. How many people here have heard of Google alerts? Do you use Google Alerts? Maybe you uh, get email updates on things that you, uh, that you that you care about on the web. Maybe put your own name in there and see what's going on with yeah, you on Google. If you're really I narcissistic think. like me, you do that. But uh, so we took the entire Google hacking database, Foundstone database, and our SLDB and loaded it into Google Alerts, and we set it up to as soon as something's added to the Google index, let us know via an RSS feed that. That, that you know, maybe there's a SQL injection in this site, or maybe there's a password file that's that's been disclosed on this site, and it's monitoring the entire web. We have over 2,400 queries that are loaded into there, and we're we're getting uh, at, at basically uh, 3,000 to 4,000 updates a day, and finding really interesting things like James Bond's website. Vulnerable James, to SQL injection. James Bond is in trouble. He needs some help. He's dumping my SQL errors right to, right to the screen. Yeah, mi6.co.uk, which is a really dangerous domain to have SQL injection on. Uh, th this is just the interface where they sell things like James Bond DVDs and T-shirts and, and other merchandise, actually dumping my SQL error messages. And one thing that I realized about importing this into Google Reader that really makes it uh, beneficial is uh, all RSS feeds that come from Google are, are through, going through FeedBurner. That means they're, they're, they're cached forever. And uh, basically, you, if you, there was a situation like, let's say users started complaining about this error message on James Bond's website. And so the developer's like, all right, fine, I'll just hide that error message. Now, the SQL injection is not fixed. As you know, it's just become blind SQL injection. And let's say you Google hacked yourself at start of Q2, and then Google hacked yourself at start of uh, Q3. Uh, you would have missed something like that. You would have missed that they covered up that error message. But setting up a Google alert for uh, the string of MySQL error messages would catch that. And then you'd actually have all this historical data archived of everything that was ever found. And you would be able to see that, oh, well, OK, we had SQL injection. Did the developer actually fix it? Or did they just hide that error message? And uh, that, that's one of the benefits of actually having this imported into your RSS uh, feeder, which I recommend uh, Google's because you get that cache and you get that great searching ability. <laughs> 
Uh, also, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, but um, if you do a, perform a Bing search and you uh, append and format equals RSS, you can actually turn Bing search results into RSS feeds that also update. Um, so we took our uh, uh, over 900 Bing hacking database queries and turned them all into RSS feeds as well and have that piping to us. As we could see, and it provides nice little snippets in uh, Google Reader for us there to see, uh, to see what we're looking at for vulnerabilities in Bing. And, uh, you know, let me show this. Mm -hmm. Fran, Fran basically was like, I want to know as soon as anything happens to the sites that, that we're, we're caring about. And uh, he uh, created also some thick clients that you can use, such as like a Google desktop uh, reader. Yeah. So just to, this is important, so I just want to just restate this just so it, it sinks in. At this point, for both Google and Bing, any new site that gets indexed by Google or Bing that matches any one of these several thousand uh, hacking database queries, as they, as they get indexed, are being sent to us live feeds in an organized fashion. So from this point forward, every single thing that meets the Google hacking database or Bing hacking database is being sent to us and organized for us. Every, we're talking, it's up to hundreds of thousands of vulnerabilities and climbing by three, 4,000, 5,000 a day and, of vulnerable websites yeah, on the internet. And the great thing is we, we did all the, all the, the footwork for you. We loaded all of those ha queries into Google Alerts and we can uh, give you, it's, it's available for download right now from our website, the uh, OPML file for this Google Reader subscription. So that's just the XML file that allows anyone to import these types of alerts into their RSS reader. So you just download this file, you subscribe to all the feeds, they're automatically nice and organized for you, you can start searching. Uh, this probably one of the largest repositories of, of live vulnerabilities on the internet, um, hundreds of thousands of vulnerable websites. Now, like obviously, we, we, we kind of, our intent with this was just a way to monitor our own, uh, like the sites that we care about, but this is also the next generation of mass injection tools. Obviously, as, uh, people kind of glaze over the fact that when malware is spreading uh, via mass injection, it, step one is search Google for vulnerable uh, classic ASP pages that uh, have SQL injection vulnerabilities in them. But uh, the, you know, I, I, I probably see that as malware writers get a little bit smarter about that, they'll actually have maybe an RSS feed that's feeding their mass injection worm uh, so that as soon as there's a new site discovered by the in, in, in the index that it's infected with uh, their attack. Yeah, I, know, I know Rob mentioned this briefly, but uh, j just to hit it, if you're not interested in looking through Google Reader at hundreds of thousands of vulnerabilities of everything on the internet, and you're just interested for just yourself, you could download our Google Desktop gadget and uh, just specify your domains, you know, as many as you want, and it'll take those RSS feeds and filter them for you and give you a nice little system, system tray alerts that uh, you have a new vulnerability in Bing or Google. Also, uh, a Droid app uh, coming soon so that you'll get these alerts right on your phone. Yeah. Yeah. But so if you absolutely cannot leave home without our Google diggity and Bing diggity hacking alerts. You know, you have to have it with you at all times. You have it on your Droid. Yeah, so basically we, all the problems that we, we saw with you know, this, this act of just every once in a while searching yourself uh, is, is really replaced by just having Google's cron system always just run at, at, as soon as new things are added to the index and give you these alerts. You're getting them in real time. You're getting them uh, from multiple engines because we took the Bing uh, hacking database feature of uh, appending format equals RSS to all of those searches, imported those into Google Reader as well. And you're getting historical data that you can search. That's, you'll never miss a vulnerability yeah, you'll that never, was indexed. You'll basically see everything that happens. You kind of get a timeline of, uh, of what happened when. And uh, it, it, this is, as I said, the, really the most uh, convenient way to do it. Pretty cool. And uh, one thing that we're, we're seeing, and, and another reason that we wanted to investigate Google uh, hacking was that the techniques had, were, were kind of waning, and no one was really actively developing it. But the search engines were still adapting. Bing's coming out with new features all the time. Google is having an app explosion. In the last five years, they've bought a ton of companies. They're integrating those and creating new apps. Uh, Google Health is a thing that, that, that they have now. How many people know about that? How many people uh, want their healthcare uh, and health records indexed by Google? Yeah, easy, and nice, easily searchable uh, interface for us to exploit. Yeah, and, and there, there's things like uh, Google, the Google uh, code search which we're going to talk about in a minute. Uh, we're talking about the uh, Google Insights for search. Basically, kind of, kind of get, that's their zeitgeist feature. Get the uh, gist of what people are searching for now. Get the trends. 
uh, we're, we, know, we identified that you know there's a, the, this treasure trove of information is really useful for spear phishing. Um, we've been calling Eric Schmidt every day. He, he hasn't returned any of our phone calls yet. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I mean, basically, if you're, if, if he's, if, for those of you that don't know, he's the CEO of Google, and he, uh, you know, if, if you're, if you're looking for information on specific people that you maybe want to find uh, their individual email address or their phone number to try to social engineer them or try to, uh, basically send them uh, malware via an email, and we're also uh, leveraging Google Code Search. How many of you guys are familiar with Google Code Search? About half. Yeah, so what this lets you do is actually use Google to search open source code repositories, things like SourceForge, things like Microsoft's CodePlex, and even Google's uh, code that they, uh, repository that they provide. It's just a subversion. Uh, but it indexes all of that code, and you can write regular expressions against it. Uh, things, you can search for things such as a select query that's also utilizing request.querystring in, in the same line and identify uh, SQL injection, identify remote file includes, identify cross-site scripting. And we realized that, uh, that this is extremely valuable information. I just want to skip over that demo. Yeah. yeah. Uh, basically, uh, we're finding that uh, we can develop these regular expressions, actually identify, like I, I found things like uh, someone's tennis uh, uh, sch match scheduling software for them and their friends. Like, okay, that has SQL injection in it. No one really cares. It's just them and their friends scheduling tennis matches. Not much you can do with that. But we're also finding popular open source software like uh, PHP commenting systems, PHP forums, and, and blog software. And verifying the vulnerabilities are indeed legit. And then, uh, you, you know, if, if they're used by a lot of people, it's worth publishing an advisory over that and adding a query that would find those types of sites that are, those sites that are vulnerable to our SLDB. And this is uh, another thing we have an intern just chained to a desk doing. Yeah. And uh, he, so we're seeing uh, one, one thing that he found, he, he actually reads Chinese, which uh, was helpful because he found a site that is a blog software that's, that's vulnerable, that has a powered by this blog name, version number at the bottom of the page. And then you can also, so you can search for that string and then you can search for uh, in URL member.asp, which is the vulnerable page. And we're seeing thousands of results of, of people in China using this blog software that's vulnerable. Yeah, so it's kind of a, a two-stage process of using Google code search to look for SQL injection in software to begin with, finding a vulnerable blog software, then developing a regex for powered by that blog software, and then finding, I think for that particular case, it was over 25,000 people who were actually using that blog software that we knew was vulnerable to SQL injection. So. And conversely, uh, th the black hat side of this is that this is going to be another evolution of the way uh, mass, mass injection attacks will spread. You'll do that same process, although rather than doing the, the, the good guy thing and publishing an advisory and, and putting out something to help people find these sites, you can just search the web and, and mass inject them. How many of you have heard of black hat SEO? <laughs> It's a uh, search engine optimization. Basically, the, the concept of getting uh, search, re search results for certain terms that are searched to the top uh, of the results. Like, you, wa you want to get, ideally, in the top 10 Google results, and you're going to get the most visitors. And we, uh, Black Hats are using this technique to actually take the, the, whatever's the popular search term of the day, maybe when Twitter come, or when uh, Twilight comes out. Uh, a lot of people are searching that, and it was actually identified. When the World Cup was out. <laughs> yeah, the, when the World Cup wa was out, uh, that, it was identified that you know a lot of the ma malware links were rising to the top of results for for the World Cup. And uh, what was it? Uh, like some kid you grew up with was on Fox News talking about uh, the, the Twilight results. Yeah, some kid I grew up with who, yeah, he uh, he, used to beat he, up he got him he got himself a spot on Fox News as an internet expert, and he's and he uh, and he. Uh, <laughs> Gave a gave a short segment on when Twilight came out about Black Hat SEO and basically said the defenses were to uh, eyeball the the URLs and Google results and see if it looks okay or not, which is possibly the worst advice that you could possibly give. Yeah, there's no way you can tell these things this. are these are actually you know trying to attack you. You might get, uh, I mean, maybe your maybe your expert eye is a little bit better than your mom's, but your mom doesn't know that the fake AV software uh, that that she that the, her computer box is telling her that she needs is uh, is something that she shouldn't install. But one thing that uh, Google provides is the Google Trends and Google Insight for Search to kind of get an idea of what people are searching for the most. So this is uh, the technique that these that attackers are using. 
Uh, so one, one thing that was identified was that since 2004, is it, that lyrics was the number one search term? Yeah, and, then, and I guess that makes kind of sense. I mean, you're, you're in a car, you hear a song that you like, you know, it's Lady Gaga, you know, Poker Face or something like that, and Poker Face. <laughs> and uh, you go home, you want to know the name of the song. Obviously, it's Poker Face, but... Um, <laughs> Uh, you type in Lady Gaga, the couple lyrics that you heard that you remember, and the word lyrics, and click go, and lyric sites come up, and that's how you find the song that you can then illegally download, so the, or, whatever, yeah. or buy the CD. Um, <laughs> Uh, so this is just a perfect example. Uh, this was a couple months ago. Uh, people will wait. They waited for a Java exploit to come out. Within a number, within a few hours of, a, of an exploit being released, these people put up uh, Lady Gaga and Rihanna fake lyrics websites. And then they use search engine optimization or black hat search engine optimization to make their uh, their fake lyric websites come up top in the Google results. So if you went home, heard, heard poker, poker Face or any Rihanna song, typed it in to Google, all the first pages of results, if you clicked on any of them, automatically owned, your computer's taken over, uh, exploiting this Java bug within a few hours of it coming out. So obviously the solution to this is that artists just need to sing more clearly so that no one has to search to understand what the lyrics actually say. Which is not always easy. I mean, you can get, uh, it could work against you with uh, incorrect lyrics like, <laughs> I've become a wet dream tomato. Have you guys There's heard that, that, that Alicia Keys song in Jay-Z, the Empire State the, of Mind? The New York one. <laughs> next time you listen to it, I, next time you listen to that song, it's still on the radio a lot. Uh, when, she come, when she comes in with the, uh, with the hook and she goes, you listen, all you were going to hear from this point on is, I've become a wet dream tomato, <laughs> nothing you can do. You will not hear anything else from now on, I promise you. <laughs> like that? Yeah. <laughs> Won't quit my day job. <laughs> Uh, so, but actually, uh, rather than artists singing more clearly, which would, might be a difficult task, uh, some of the defenses that you can utilize are uh, things that, that the major the search providers and browser providers are already building for us. They're trying to protect users by building the Google Safe Browsing API, which is a blacklist of known malware and known phishing sites that if you've ever gone to a page that said, this is a reported attack site, continue at your own risk. Uh, that's what's something they're integrating into to search results, uh, especially a, a useful for any, anyone that's utilizing black hat SEO techniques to get those search results to the top. They're going to protect you from that. Um, sandboxing software is another thing that's becoming uh, much more useful. Anyone here use Sandboxy? I do. Yeah, you, you guys do? Uh, I know I, Fran's hooked. My friend Oscar uh, told me about it. I know he uses it. And uh, it's uh, basically uh, going to run your, br your browser or any application for that matter in a sandbox that's uh, protecting right access to things on your system, such as anything uh, that you download. It's going to say, do you want to recover this outside your sandbox? Or if anywhere malware were to actually exploit your system, it's protecting from uh, things like such as rights to the registry, such as named piped access or, or, or any, anything uh, that's, that's sensitive on the system. And if you were to get infected by something, you can just throw that sandbox away and uh, so you can browse all the uh, malware, Rihanna lyric sites that you want all day and then just throw the sandbox away when you're done, which is really the way to go. And it seems to be the trend. I think um, in the last week or week and a half alone, uh, Dell released their own version of a secure browser using sandboxing. Um, Adobe released uh, the, their next version of Reader is going to have a protected mode that's utilizing sandboxing. And I believe Office 2010 uh, has a sandboxing mode as well. So this is really the... Uh, you know, as good of a defense as eyeballing up URLs and Google results is to see if it's, um, if it's good or not, sandboxing is really the way to go. And, and really, the, this, is, uh, this seems to be the trend, basically, uh, that malware uh, writers are unleashing things on the web, maybe because they have a decided purpose. One example uh, just last month was uh, some, some guys in China wanted to release this malware that would steal passwords to some online uh, games in China. And it got out of control. And it, it basically, as I said, like the fact that people glaze over the, that step one is search Google for vulnerable websites, uh, it, it started hitting things like the ad providers for Wall Street Journal. And uh, for Jerusalem Post was another site that, was, that ended up distributing this malware uh, that was trying to steal Chinese game passwords. And uh, this is, a, this is a, a, co a common pr problem that I only expect to increase, especially as uh, they get smarter about scraping the results and scraping the uh, new vulnerable websites from Google. 
Yeah. And it's important to note, I, I read like 20 articles on this, and all the ones you read are very vague about how this, how this actually started. I mean, if you see in the bottom right there, it, it, they believe they compromised the total number of websites of 7,000 to 114,000 websites. It's kind of a big range uh, of, I don't know how many there are, let's say a billion, gajillion, bajillion, I don't know. <laughs> um, but uh, they don't really cover how that happened to begin with, and, you know, it's, it's, it's our belief that people are utilizing either Google or Bing or things like that to find 100,000 vulnerable websites to begin with before they uh, do these mass SQL injection attacks. And as we said, that it's great that they're providing these blacklists of known uh, domains that are spreading this information. Uh, but I, one, one idea that, that I had was, you know, how can we mine that information to monitor our websites? Because the fact of the matter is most uh, website administrators have no idea when they get out of that blacklist. Uh, this is something I found on the NetSec list on Reddit. It said that uh, this guy says some dickhead emailed me a few weeks ago and told me that my Claim site... It was malware. Yeah, basically saying that his site was uh, in the blacklist, and when people were visiting it in Chrome, it, it, it would say a reported attack site. He said, no way this is possible. Uh, but then he actually checked it and uh, realized, oh, yeah, uh, it, it is saying that. Why am I on this blacklist? And, and, and I, I just think, I just thought, you know, we have all these capabilities and all these features in Google and Bing to be able to identify uh, what, what we're linking to and, and what, uh, what's linking to us. Why not have something better than dickhead alert system to, to, to let us know that... This is the existing defense, the dickhead <laughs> notification alert system. Some dickhead emailed me and told me that my site is serving up malware. Yeah, basically, like, I, I just wanted to, to, to investigate what would be better than that. What can, what can we do to, for the average person to know uh, if they've been added to these blacklists? And so one of the advanced techniques we came up with was to... Protect your neck. Protect again. our neck. And uh, that, something that you know, we're, we're calling malware diggity at this point. And, and Google, or uh, rather Bing has a, a great feature called link from domain that you can get all of the off-site links, uh, all the sites basically that you're, it, you'll dump all the URLs on your site that aren't linking to that, that domain. Like, so let's say we want uh, link from domain stackloo.com that has uh, every external host that we're linking to. And I wanted to take those results and compare them to URLs that are in this blacklist. See, see, if, there, no, see if any of those URLs are uh, phishing websites or malware websites. And that would help you get kind of a, a, an alert system together to let you know if you've been a victim of one of these mass injections. And uh, even to get that information more real time, we can, still, we can use the append uh, format equals RSS onto those Bing results to actively monitor any, any new links. Uh, let's say you have user-generated content on your site, like a commenting system or a forum, and uh, anyone's allowed to add a link. I, I came up with this idea when I was doing an assessment of, uh, of a site that was kind of like MySpace. It was it kind of, it were what MySpace was supposed to be. It let venues and artists and fans uh, log in and upload music and, and basically uh, set, set share information about concerts. And after they fixed all the cross-site scripting uh, that I found, they also still wanted to allow uh, external links. They still wanted to l let people link to whatever they wanted. And I just thought about, you know, there's some risk in that that you might be utilized as a, a phishing platform, especially with your large user base, user base and especially uh, the, your, your prime target for distributing malware as well. So you should actually integrate some code into your app that uses uh, the, the Google Safe Browsing API to identify any new links that users are adding. But they, they basically were like, well, we don't have time to do that. We're going to launch the site anyway. But you could utilize something like just Google's crawler or Bing's crawler to let you know of any, any links on your site that are uh, in that blacklist. So are, are, how many of you guys are familiar with what happened last month with the Wall Street Journal incident? Not, not many people, right? I'm surprised about that. 100,000 websites compromised and nobody, nobody's heard about it. Basically, just to give you a quick visual of what it is, is they had 10,000 or 100,000 or, or whatever you could imagine a uh, number of websites scoped out for SQL injection, and they waited. They waited for a browser bug to come out. I believe it was an Adobe uh, Flash vulnerability. As Soon as that did, what they did was create an exploit for that. They SQL injected all 100,000 of these websites, append it to every page, you know, include this piece of JavaScript that's an off-site link that exploits this browser bug, so that anyone who went to any one of these websites the next day, including the Wall Street Journal, if any of you guys read the Wall Street Journal, if you went to that website, it linked you to this piece of malware that exploited your browser and popped you. So everyone who went to those websites that day automatically gets their browsers on. So it was one to 10,000 to 
God knows how many people went to those sites, and there's still tons of them actually, if you just Google for these links, these off-site links. And uh, if using our tools, Malware Diggity, you could sit there and monitor what are, what's linking off of my site and compare it against these lists and not have to have some dickhead email you uh, and let you know that, hey, by the way, everyone who comes to your site is getting owned or fake AV installed. Um, uh, you can now get a, hey, you have a new off-site link, and by the way, it's in this malware list. Maybe you should look into that. It's a little better than the existing defenses. And this is just a demonstration of the results for, like, actually, this, this worked really well for monitoring new links on Twitter that were distributing malware or phishing. I was getting a lot of hits uh, based on comparing those URLs to what's in the blacklist. And uh, that, that's just one example of, of, of a good way to use this technique. Uh, also, Yahoo has a, a site explorer that lets you see in links to your site. So I thought it would be interesting to see, take a known malware URL, like the URL for the Wall Street Journal uh, injection was uh, robint.us. Uh, rob so if you could just and put that URL on Yahoo Site Explorer, and it, uh, its bot had gone out and indexed all of the sites that are linking to that, so that we know all the ones that are infected, that, that's also useful information that you can gather. And if you want something a little bit more professional, a little more uh, uh, enterprise that's actually going out and crawling your site and uh, identifying things, uh, doing things like JavaScript deobfuscation and uh, analyzing uh, all the content on your site actively, uh, Armorize has a new, a new thing called Hack Alert. Uh, but if you want something free and crude, uh, you can use these techniques from Bing that we were providing. And so basically we identified that it was possible to monitor our external links and our incoming links and then compare those to the blacklist, and then de detect infections, and then alert you to that. Uh, but my friend Oscar asked me, uh, if, is it possible to get people added to the blacklist? And I was like, hmm, that would be <laughs> devastating. Uh, because the, the, the black hat side of this is that you can, uh, if you show the next slide, uh, identify the links that are in those blacklists, and mass inject your competition via comment spam, or if they have any user-generated content or forums, and then, like, basically, let's say you want to wipe out all the other distributors of wolf socks on the internet, so that you're the primary retailer of wolf socks. You could have your competition blacklisted, and then their page rank goes to zero, and they any, basically they're not going to show up in the top results of Google anymore. If if people do click the link, they're going to get warned that it's a reported attack site, and you can't go there anymore. And basically, it, th this, is, this is something that uh, companies could profit from. I'm not sure if this technique is actively being used. The uh, algorithm that identifies links that belong in the blacklist is a closely guarded secret. And it, uh, this is something I want to test some more to be able to identify how you could get someone added to the blacklist. Uh, but I, I could see this as a, a service line that the Russian business network might offer, saying, like, uh, you know, we'll take out your competition. Or as uh, mafia techniques, they could say something like, uh, either give us money or we'll add you to the blacklist. And uh, this is just something that's kind of unexplored that uh, information that you can e easily gather from these search engines, I think, could be utilized to, to do something like that. Yeah, I, I could tell you how I would use it. If you Google for Fran Brown, you will not find our research or me in any way. You will find the Fran Brown College of Beauty. Um, so if I can get that knocked off the uh, Google page results, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this search engine de-optimization. <laughs> Future predictions. Uh, so just to wrap things up uh, with uh, where we think things are going, because things are rapidly changing. Um, they've been a little stagnant since 2004, 2005, but uh, we're kicking things back off again. Um, as we mentioned earlier, uh, I believe there's going to be a continued data explosion. Google will index health records to phone records to open source code to anything they could possibly index and make uh, provide an easily searchable interface to. So we're going to see a lot more data index, real-time streaming updates. Um, I also believe that we're going to see uh, renewed tool development, both on the hacker side as well as the security side. So uh, we're stepping things up on the security side, but we're going to start seeing things like more uh, automated Google worms, real-time detection and exploitation. People are just sitting there waiting in real time, uh, uh, finding these vulnerabilities on Google and automatically exploiting them. And then finally, I believe that Google involvement, as well as, well as Bing involvement, will they'll start getting involved more. Google's been getting a lot of, uh, a lot of heat from security, from uh, losing their uh, custom authentication code to China, allegedly, and you know, stealing everyone's wireless in Europe with, that they're going around. So there's a lot of heat on Google right now from a security perspective, and I know it's led to um, them hiring a lot more in the security department. I think this will be lower on their priority list, but I think they'll start getting more involved in the, the Google hacking and Bing hacking side of things. 
And uh, just to show you, I don't know if you guys have ever messed with this interface, uh, just regular Google, if you expand the side and go to updates, um, they are providing, you could see what was indexed and what was going on in Twitter and Google five minutes ago or at 2 p.m. this afternoon. Uh, Google's providing real-time streaming updates of this information. So we're going to start seeing more and more real-time uh, uses of this uh, information in uh, uh, exploitation. So I, I will be available for questions after the talk. Uh, I hope you appreciate uh, what we shared today. Thank you.